Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Tuesday, August 21st, 2012, and I'm Darko. This uh, set of videos I'm going to talk about is going to be with, about Syria and Russia, Central Asia, and that's about it. All the links and headlines will be posted in YouTube's video description. So the first up is Syria. Obama threatens to attack Syria. So it says here that the CEO of United States Incorporated has a stern warning for the country of Syria. In an address made early Monday, the commander-in-chief confirmed that he has not ruled out an offensive strike on Assad and his regime. Just recently, Russia, um, I guess they opposed a no-fly zone that they're trying to declare. But it says here, speaking at the White House, he said that if Syria were, were to deploy chemical weapons or biological weapons, the United States will follow through with his threat of launching an attack. Also, I've covered um, pretty thoroughly uh, Syria and these chemical weapons and how Israel's supposedly tracing them and that they're afraid they're going to in the hands of Hezbollah and that um, just recently uh, they were talking about Iran, Iranian Revolutionary Guard soldiers inside Syria. I don't really believe that. So they're trying to make this connection between these chemical biological weapons, Hezbollah, Iran, and um, kind of like a way to just go ahead and, and just kick whatever they're going to kick off or they want to kick off. But um, if there was any worry, I mean, if you're living inside Syria, around Syria or Israel, if there's any worry about these chemical weapons being deployed, I would think that they would get in the hands of Al-Qaeda and the U.S. Western Israeli backed uh, terrorist organizations, terrorist mercenaries that they're hired of getting the, uh, these chemical weapons in their hands vice the actual government of Syria's. So the typical rhetoric uh, coming from Obama said that the United States will not tolerate any efforts to allow a sovereign government or any other sovereign nation to use weapons of mass destruction unless, of course, they were used like in the case of the United States with Hiroshima or possibly Israel. But that's who he works for, so that's why he says what he says. He reads off a teleprompter. Syrian helicopters drop leaflets over Aleppo. So the Syrian helicopters have dropped leaflets over the northern city of Aleppo, urging residents not to shelter rebels and warning the free Syrian army it had one last chance to surrender. So it says here that some of the leaflets dropped late Saturday, and what rebels and residents said was the first were designed as official-looking checkpoint passes for supporters of the rebels <coughs> wishing to surrender. So it says here the holder of this pass is allowed to cross security forces checkpoints to surrender. The holder of this pass will be well treated and reunited with his family after verifications are conducted. And also it said your last chance to stay alive is to give up your weapons because there is nothing you can do against the Syrian army. Don't miss that opportunity. Go back to your family and stop feeling hatred around you. It says here the leaflets were met by disbel disbelief and laughter of the rebels who picked them off the streets. One of them said, Honorable citizens, don't turn your homes into places for armed terrorist gangs and don't assist them in killing the people of your country. So let's see what one of the terrorists said. I can't believe how disconnected from reality they are. They said here, Assad, what a stupid man. He probably thinks all the people in Syria are as stupid as he is. Of course, they call him the Free Syrian Army Fighter. Sounds very noble and, and everything. This is so one-sided, man. It's like, look what it says. Two hours after the leaflets were dropped, helicopters were back in the sky and opened fire on several central neighborhoods. So they're saying they just started opening fire on civilians, right? Okay. We're going to get into this because we're going to actually see what the reporters with the Syrian government are actually saying about these terrorists. It says here, rebels control the ground in large parts of Aleppo, which sounds like a good thing, but continue to be harassed ooh, by tank shelling, air raids, and sniper fire. What a way to finish it. Civilians and rebels alike fear a major offensive by the Syrian army in a bid to reconquer the country's commercial capital. So the Free Syrian Army is actually controlled by the West. We've already stated this. Well, we already know who they're funded by and who they're being supported by militarily, logistically, financially, all that. Syria rebels aided by British intelligence. They're talking about what, MI5 or MI6? It says here, Syrian rebels are reportedly receiving British intelligence on regime troops, whereabouts as fighting in the country continues. It said British intelligence is observing things closely from Cyprus. It said it's very useful because they find out a great deal. The British are giving the information to the Turks and the Americans, and we are getting it from the Turks. Man, that's got to be annoying, dude. 
you know? It's like, I'm not for statism. I've already mentioned this so many times, so it's not like I'm saying, like, this is so great, you know, this nation-state known as Syria. But it's just like, they're making it seem like these are peaceful activists, protesters that are armed with all these weapons and, and heavy, you know, heavy machine guns and stuff like that, and they're carrying out all these atrocities, and it's never mentioned. And you've got the biggest empire in the world sitting there feeding these terrorist mercenaries all of this, you know, monitor, they monitor communications of the movements of the government army and blah, 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 and then they give it to them, give it to them, and these terrorists can go and go over the border that's been reinforced by Turkey, right, uh, so that they can run away like rats over the border and immerse themselves with peaceful refugees. that are They're only refugees because they don't want to get caught in the crossfire between the terrorists uh, taking on the government there and uh, blowing people up. So they actually, they left. So then they go in there and they recruit people from places like in the Turkey refugee camp. And they start fights and they recruit other mercenaries. And this is so funny because I covered this like two months ago. It's the first indication that British intelligence is playing a covert role in the anti-regime revolt. Ooh, ooh, ooh. CIA spies smuggle 14 Stinger missiles into Syria so rebels can take out the regime warplanes. So the CIA is smuggling Stinger missiles. They said the ground air weapons have been delivered across the Turkish border to the Free Syrian Army and were partly paid for by Saudi Arabia, security source confirmed or claimed. They're not the only ones. Everybody wants to get in on this. German spies active off Syria's coast. This is from what? August 19th. German spies are stationed off the Syrian coast and are passing on information designed to help the terrorist rebels in their fight against uh, the gov the leader of the government of that country. But they're not the only ones as well. Canada is now helping the war effort uh, in Syria. That's right. So this is their minister and foreign affairs minister announced that new Canadian support in response to the crisis in Syria, i.e. the regime change that's coming in from the West, isn't happening fast enough, which is why you're hearing rhetoric such as this by Obama threatening to attack Syria. No fly zones. Uh, uh, the terrorists bitching about not having enough weapons and stuff like that. So, my website is ggnonline.com. Also on YouTube, DDarko2012 and DDarko2013 on my YouTube channels. You can subscribe there. Uh, do you believe the recent media attention of the feminist? Uh, ban known as the riot, jail sentence, and the protests of the Russian embassy in London was a Western strategy to demonize and destabilize Russia. The majority of people are saying, 52% are saying yes, followed by 19% saying no. You can follow GGN by putting in your email address there and receive updates. Also, I'd like to thank viewers uh, who have donated, especially recently. It is very much appreciated. Uh, also, check out these recent videos. They were pretty good. Um, the ones I put up there. So, okay, moving on here. Robert Fisk, they snipe at us, then run and hide in sewers. Our writer, and this was from, let's see here. Is it going to go up? No, okay. It says here, our writer was given exclusive access to Assad generals accused of war crimes as they seek to defeat the rebels in Aleppo. So it goes on and says, uh, basically it says here that this they were went along with this 53-year-old general of Assad's army, the most senior operational commander in Aleppo. He goes on here and he says that he's going to try to clean Aleppo of terrors in 20 days. And then it goes on here and he says that it's quite a boast, especially since in the area a suburb of the city where sniper fire snapped down leafy streets for the Battle of Aleppo is far from over. But he says it's a strange sensation to sit in a private house commandeered by the Syrian army. He says 19th century prints still on the walls, carpet immaculate, and talk to generals accused by the Western leaders of being war criminals. He says, I was, so to speak, in the lair of the enemy, but immensely tall, balding general said here that he had his own impressions. He said, he ref he said that uh, basically he had much to say about the fighting, the contempt with which they regard their enemies, calling them mice, i.e. rats, like in Libya, because they basically fight and they run. It says here he would not give his name. They said they snipe at us, and then they run and hide in the sewers. Foreigners, Turks, Chechens, Afghans, Libyans, Sudanese, and Syrians. I said, yes, Syrians too, but smugglers and criminals. So it's kind of interesting. He says as he prowled through the weapons all captured within the last week, they found sticks of Swedish explosives. Dated 99, and it says here whose office address was printed in Sweden. The words made in USA were marked on each stick. Belgian rifles, 
a Russian sniper scope, a 9mm Spanish made pistol, followed on, uh, followed by what? Every unit of the terrorists has a field ambulance, an intelligence officer said. They steal medicines from our pharmacies, but bring uh, other packets with them. This is interesting as well, because remember, I was kind of covered about the defectors, about how it was kind of a. Um, they were kind of hyping it up. There wasn't that big of a defection problem. It says army defectors existed, he said, but they were dropout soldiers who had failed their basic tests who were motivated only by money. This is what they say under interrogation, he said. It goes on here, it says, it wasn't difficult to work out just how the fighting Aleppo is developing, walking the streets for more than an hour with a Syrian army patrol. The individual snipers, talking about the rebel terrorists, would shoot from houses and then disappear before government soldiers arrived. So I don't know, this is kind of skewed right here, but it says at least a dozen, dozen civilians emerged from their homes, retirees and their 70 shopkeeper, shopkeepers, sorry, local businessmen with their families and unaware that a foreign journalist was watching, put their arms around Syrian troops. Mm -hmm. One of them said that uh, he had stayed in his home as foreign fighters used his courtyard to fire on government soldiers. And you can't forget about um, Lebanon, because we're talking about uh, Hezbollah or Hezbollah, whatever. They... You know, they're kind of part of that whole Lebanon structure, political structure as well. So it's not good for Syrians that are pro-Assad in Libya. Syrian beaten, robbed in East Lebanon, and uh, he was 50 years old, beaten by a group of unidentified people. So uh, this was then August 20th, fresh kidnappings of Syrians in Lebanon. Two Syrian nationals have been kidnapped and two more are missing, believed to be kidnapped. It says here, mass men snatched her husband after midnight as he stood outside their home. Remember, there was actually a pro-Assad, um, I don't know if he's a pro-Assad person or a, a actual part of the government, but he was snatched out of his bed. You remember that re when I reported on that? He was snatched out of his bed at, mid at like pre-dawn. Israel arrests teen girls over hate attack on Palestinians. It says Jerusalem police arrested two 50-year-old girls on Monday, bringing to... Uh, seven, the number of Jewish teenagers arrested in connection with a brutal attack on young Palestinians last week. So this is the peaceful nation of Israel. So one of the girls incited the teenagers to attack the young Arabs by saying that she had been attacked by Arabs in the past. The Israeli government has expressed condemnation of the attack which took place in the Jerusalem Central Sion Square. A quick follow-up, suspect involved in Jerusalem lynch of Palestinians said, let him die, he's an Arab. So... So it says here, one of them admitted to beating the 17-year-old in the chest, saying he could die for all I care. He's an Arab. I saw a video of an actual Israeli Defense uh, Force soldier saying, calling Arabs like uh, basically, uh, uh, what did he call them? Dogs, I think it was. So, if war comes, will the U.S. open its military depots in Israel? So, so with all the war talk going on, mostly coming from the West side, especially Israel, trying to push this before the November elections, says the IDF is, of course, a powerful and independent army, but they can't do it without the United States. Meanwhile, six secret army American bases, not army, but just American bases, are spread out throughout the country, according to foreign reports, chock full of ammunition, smart bombs, missiles, an assortment of military vehicles, and hospitals with... 500 beds. I'm sure there's a lot more than that. They had, what, 5,000 soldiers there exercising in Israel recently, so who knows if they really left. Some interesting news here. Egyptian anti-aircraft missiles reported in Sinai. It says here anti-aircraft missiles can only be intended for Israel's jets because Sinai terrorists don't have aircraft. This is from 820. Then it's followed by this. Israel asked Egypt to remove tanks from Sinai, so they said Israel is troubled by the an entry of Egyptian tanks in the northern Sinai Peninsula without coordination, i.e. permission from Israel. But I don't know. I just I just don't buy this. I, I think Egyptians army, the e Egypt's army, is basically in the hands of Israel in the West. So I think this is smoke and mirrors for something else. Especially with Muslim Brotherhood, uh, a Western proxy, like I reported on before, uh, basically going to Iran, which again, I think Iran too. I think Iran, the fact that Iran surrounded, it's not that... Iran is surrounded, it's because Iran has already been taken over by the powers that be. And all the countries around them are going down like dominoes. And the smoke and mirrors is, oh, Iran, ooh, Iran, right? Ooh, now it's, now it's Egypt and Sinai. Meanwhile, these old puppet dictatorships or, quote, sovereign nations are going down one by one. And everybody's focused on Iran. Uh, look at this. I think this is another thing that's going to happen, right? The Kurdish state to be uh, created because of this whole Syrian crisis. Kurds see increasing influence in the Middle East, gaining more and more leverage, and have not been able to unify, but neighboring countries are already alarmed. And of course, it's about business and drugs, 
the opium war. So join me in part two. Thanks.